I'd always looked at Iceland as a place I'd like to go, but this was had the added benefit that I was actually going to make a difference for the company and for myself as well. It was kind of a, a trip of a lifetime. To go out into the, into the middle of nowhere where we were the first human footprints there. I saw the posters around work and thought, I fancy going to Iceland, let's have a look at it. And ended up going onto the Earthwatch website and finding out more about the, the foundation and what they do. We're with a team of very experienced academics that were willing to tell us what we were researching and why we were doing it. So we'd get up around about um, six in the morning and then load up the, uh, load up the Land Rovers and then head out into the field to do various bits of research. We were collecting data with two different types of GPS units so that we could establish how wide the outburst floods coming from the glaciers were and uh, what height through the valley they rose to. We were tasked with going out to find small boulders in what had been a flow and there was various criteria that we had to, to get to date the rocks properly. As you can see, we're all hunting boulders frantically. Danny's using the detailed kick it over technique. Gary's found that he likes so much, he's going to take a photo of it. It turned into a bit of a game where people would wander off and find a rock that they like the look of and stand next to it. Looks like he's been given the nod. I think they've just got a little star. Did you? Oh, well done. That's a beer. <laughs> well, onwards where others are standing with boulders. <laughs> Mark's in place with himself. So is Darren. It would have to be photographed in situation and then turned over to see if it passed. If it was uh, rough on the underside, it meant that it hadn't been rolled over when the water had flowed over the top of it. No oh, truth. Yes. Good one. Yeah. Rough as anything. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing that I found incredible was the the, the landscape around you had all been formed by ice that had receded. The amount of ice that was there in some points was up to two kilometres thick, which is an incredible amount of ice. Going out there and seeing the glacier melt on a daily basis really sort of brought it home. How much water is contained within the glaciers in Iceland and the polar ice caps. The Land Rovers were absolutely essential on that trip. It would have been physically impossible to do the research we did without viable 4x4 vehicles. We've got Dave the Discovery, which was, I think it was an 08 plate, Discovery 3 HSE. And then there was uh, Leo, the 20-year-old Defender. We were going up the side of volcanoes across rocky terrain, which is unbelievable and I was personally unaware of the capability of those vehicles until you put them in that environment. I think we were quite lucky with the conditions that we actually were faced with. There was a, a sandstorm on one of the days and it was quite a, a severe sandstorm. And you had John Tong who had his goggles on for most of the trip. He was fully prepared just in case he had sand inside the vehicle. We had a bit of a laugh. We did just enjoy ourselves, but we also got the job done and we got things done extremely well. There's a real sense of achievement and pride by telling people about it and, and looking back and thinking, yeah, that, it was real, we did that. Yeah, it was a big achievement. It was just outstanding. It was something I'd, I'd never done before and loved every minute of it. It was fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of what we did and what we achieved out in Iceland. I'd go back and do it again. I thought it was phenomenal.